there's COVID, there's losing their jobs, there's losing their housing. Voting is not at the top of that list. And so for us, it's making sure that they know that voting is actually one way that they can fight back against all that is happening. We're voting against hate, we're voting against racism, we're voting against violence, and we're voting for our families, for our safety, for our health. Our work is to make sure that the issues that we've been advocating for for a long time become an electoral priority. Movement Voter PAC funds grassroots organizing to win elections and build power that lasts. We're working with groups in states across the country to register new voters, support new leaders, and build the infrastructure to make progressive change in 2020 and beyond. Our partners range in size and age. Some have been around for years driving local change, while others are the emerging leaders of tomorrow. In the swing state of Arizona, we're funding over 25 groups, reaching voters in every county. Our partner groups include Poder, Lucha, Black Phoenix Votes, and Dene Care Action. 2020 comes with lots of opportunity to shift political power in the state of Arizona. We have local city council district races, county attorney races. We are seats away from flipping the state house and state senate. A senate seat up for grabs. We're a presidential swing. By engaging voters and turning out communities of color and young people, we can take back our power at every single level. Arizona didn't become a swing state overnight. Arizonans have organized for over 10 years to overcome oppression. 2010, SB 1070 was the anti-immigrant law that was passed that year. It's just straight out uncomfortable. Um, I felt like I had a target on my back. I had to be careful around police. I had to be careful around any authority. We had to fear getting out of our house. We had to fear going to school. You could just feel the tension in the, in, in the community. No one was going anywhere as a Latino person. How do you not take it personally? I got involved because in 2010, when SB 1070 passed, I decided that I didn't want to be afraid anymore and that, that we deserved better. It was the powder keg that sent a lot of people to the Capitol that had a lot of people asking questions. It's folks that 15, 16, 17, 18 years old back then are now in their late 20s and are leaders in organizations. People that will no longer allow a law like SB 1070 to happen. Our organizations are mobilizing voters in the 2020 election at a mass scale. The pandemic will not stop us. This year, we're really excited because our campaign is to ensure that we get one million voters to march to the polls. So we'll try and get traffic through like the phone calls. We'll let them know about the events if they have trouble uh, registering online or if like the site doesn't work for them or they can't be found. We'll have them come through, they can register with the form and we could turn it in for them. But it's completely like, contact free if they want. We could do it over the like the tablet or like the phone. And yeah, just like a drive-thru. If they don't want to come to the table or anything, they could stay in the car. We go over there, we hand them the mask and the gloves, we take them the clipboard, we take them everything, and we give it to them so they don't have to get out of the car to register to vote. Because nobody wants to get sick, no one wants to contract the virus if they go to the polls. My name is Viridiana Hernandez, and I am the director at Poder. Poder organizes and focuses on building new organizers and really taking a stance on things that, you know, a lot of politicians have tried to avoid for a long time. Things like police violence, things like the, the work of Polimigra. We're talking to 200,000 youth, but then we're also talking to 49,000 of their moms or their sisters or their aunts. And so that is gonna be our strategy is to, just as we organize as a family, to target our voters and go after voters as a family. Estoy aquí luchando por, por mi gente, por mí, por mis hijos, para un mejor futuro. Estamos organizándonos como comunidad y como grupo, equipo de padres, en cómo vamos a trabajar, en cómo vamos a hacer el movimiento más fuerte. We are going to be texting a lot of voters. Again, because of COVID, we have a program both on Zoom and in person. So why is this election critical? Is that this is what it currently looks like. 
A lot of our volunteers do not have access to a lot of the technology that is really critical in this moment. And so volunteers are still coming to our office to use technology here, to use our Wi-Fi here, to get training, making sure that it is us, young people and immigrant families that are talking to young people and immigrant families. We are the community, right? Like our office is in Maryvale. This is not only a place we go organize, this is our home. These organizations are from these neighborhoods. These leaders come from these streets. They know the issues, they've lived the issues day to day, and they've built trust with the community. That is why they're best equipped to talk to these voters. We know that black folks here can make or break an election. There's enough of us that can close a close race. We realized that black folks hadn't been engaged on any issue in quite some time. And so we created a survey and started going into the neighborhoods. The survey proved to be really good. We talked to over a thousand people. What we have started doing is doing like the texting and the phone banks. Um, to reconnect with those black folks that we talked to through the survey. Those folks now are going to be like our voting base. Building relationships is the most important part of activism, of organizing. When you're there for community, you're part of community, you're helping and contributing to community, that trust is already there. So we don't only have to talk about voting, we can talk about why voting is important. We can talk about how it affects your family, how it affects your job, how it affects your day-to-day -day life. When COVID happened, there is a large population that were dramatically affected by it. The city did nothing. And so we started the Mutual Aid Phoenix Network based on a need for providing safe access to food and essential uh, items to the community. Just being around is something that is also aiding to building that trust. We have to continue to show up for our interests and for our communities. And one of the ways we can do that is through voting. We are an organization that has been operating on the Navajo Nation for the past 30 years. There's always been a lot of issues that we have looked at, like our water rights. The Peabody Mine, they've been drawing their water from the in aquifer, which is the sole source for us up here on the, on the Black Mesa. While at the same time, there are thousands and thousands of people that don't have running water, and I'm one of them. Our pristine water is being destroyed, polluted, and wasted. The coronavirus, it's been very devastating to the Navajo people and the health people. They talk about we have to wash our hands. You know, many times a day, for 22nd. We can't do that because we don't have the water to do so. The rules and regulation that regulates the mining activity, it's all regulated by the federal government. So it's really important that the Navajo people take the election seriously. The NetCare Action is launching its inaugural Diné Voter Turnout Project. This initiative is unique in that it's by Navajo, for Navajo, with Navajo thinking. And there's no other organization that I'm aware of that can say that. So more often than not, we try to recruit people that we feel are willing to engage relatives, extended family members. Um, on the Navajo Nation, we also call them our clan family members. Well, because we grew up here, we, we know our struggles and we know, and we just, we just know like our communities. I'm just trying to find like uh, suitable ways to get the, the youth engaged in voting. Washington, Washington, We just have a lot of federal proposals which could really be harmful to a lot of tribal communities. We felt the urge to take action this year and pursue this um, in a way that we've never done in the past.
these groups are the trusted messengers of the community. And that's why we need to continue to invest in local organizing. What the MVP community has done is they have centered the difficult work. They have centered the people that always get overlooked. And we are deeply grateful because not only are these dollars helping us win these elections and change the landscape in this state, what these dollars are also doing is building leaders, leaders that are going to stay and fight in the work. It's really rare to be trusted as people of color, to be trusted as women and to be trusted as young people to know our community's best. You're investing in a dream, and then it's up to us to make that dream happen. And that's the best part. The current conditions with COVID-19, with climate change, with the threats to our environment, to our land, by highlighting those things for people that they will realize and understand how important it is to not just vote in this election, but to continue that. 10 years ago, I was afraid of a lot of things. I was afraid of my voice, of my power. I didn't know my rights. And in the last 10 years, it has been both a process to confront the injustice and the hate that we've lived and experienced, but also regain my own power and, and reclaim my own agency. There's still a lot of work to do, but we are in a moment of power that we were never before. The work that we're doing is paving the way for those wins to be able to happen.